this is normally where we do the night vision stuff so you'd have seen this in the kind of twilight and night a few times but today we're actually out when it's sunny which is <laughs> quite different well Gadge we've had a nice old stroll into the woods yeah it's pretty tranquil gonna have a little nap but we're here to uh, do some mill skills yeah like kind of bushcraft that's relevant to airsoft yeah so we're both off to gunman's descent no longer 24 hour game because of covid but modern mill sim with the sleepover isn't it but there's definitely a sleepover and we're going to sleep well i'm certainly going to sleep a bit more uh, military style i you might, might sit in a tent <laughs> you might glam <laughs> <laughs> but gadge is going to show me some ways of setting up my basher and we'll go through what all that is so I basically have no knowledge other than watching some YouTube over the last week. You used to teach cadets? I used to teach cadets a bit of field craft and obviously as a reservist soldier we have a, sort of a very basic introduction to survival skills and how to set up a basher, how to sleep in the wild in your kit. Obviously in the military it's very different because you have like armed security so you can be a little bit free and easy about where you leave things to a degree. Yep. But um, we're going to have to be a lot more sensible about not getting in the way of people, yep. not disrupting the environment, not breaking anything. So uh, this, is a, this is a public woodland. Um, there is no camping permission here, so we're not going to stay overnight. We're just literally going to set up uh, and then break down and leave, leave no damage, leave nothing behind, yeah. and leave it completely clear. So, Gad, should we? Um... Let's show you the different ways we can set a batter up. Okay, Tom. So, I mean, we've got paracord attached to this anyway, yeah. and you could just use that paracord. But to be honest, bungees are your friend. If you're okay with them, don't mind. Them being careful that you don't get flicked in the eye with one or whatever. We can probably get this up in a matter of minutes just using bungees. Probably need two to go around this tree. Right. So, Gadge, how high should you have this set, do you think? Low as you can, really. Okay. It depends what you're doing. So Probably less than... The higher it is, the more wind you're going to catch, and also if you're in a tactical milsim, which is very rare I know, yep. but the more visible it is, because it's going to block light, it's going to be a big shadow basically yep. through the trees. So what we're going to do now, let's imagine you're going to keep it that high, we'll pull these sides out, and I'm pretty sure you haven't brought tent paper, but I have. I do. You do, but yeah, brilliant. Okay, well prepared there, mate. And we're just going to peg it out. Now, there you go. Well, that that was... took you minutes. Yeah? yeah, so if we're doing a... So the advantage of the paracord is if you don't have any really convenient trees, we can do a much longer run yeah. between, you know, but this is a 10 metre ridge line, so we can run between trees yeah. or objects 10 metres apart, but because we've got these nice big community trees. And we're so not that tree's going to block your wind from that end to end. you can also put your kit on that end, you can put your burden, everything else, go yeah. into this end, as you can see there's not a lot of room in there, but the disadvantage of this as well is that with the limited amount of space you've got for admin, really your berg and everything else has to stay outside, so if you've waterproofed it like Tom has with a dry bag, not a problem. If you're doing an unprepared mill summer and all your kit's just bunged in there and it rains, you can be playing in wet kit the next day. You might even have a wet gun. Right, so this is inside. You can see we're not, you know, you can, you can have to crawl in. There's no real headroom. But if you're trying to stay low in the woods, you can see that there's not much protuberance. So really, Tom, all we need to do is lift these tent pegs out and take our guy lines that you've got already secured yeah. and just attach them to these bigger trees over there. Now the only problem we're going to have here is because we made a ridgeline tent, the actual angle of your lean-to is going to be quite high. You may actually have to adjust that ridgeline. In fact, I'm not going to reach here. Have you got only got a four metre? Yeah, I've not got quite enough. Uh, but we just secure it to a bungee. Yeah. yeah. We've got more visibility, so if we are doing tactical milsim, if we want to actually see what's going on, we can actually camp on this and be aware of the enemy. It's still quite high. Um, if you're really soldiering, you probably want it about half that height. Yeah. Uh, but for airsoft terms, you really, there's no point being right down belly on the ground. Now, the only problem we've got at the moment is we've got a bit of a sag here, and if it, obviously if it rains, that's yeah. just going to do that. So we really need to lift this. Now, we can either do that by putting a stick through here, by finding a suitable size stick, or we can attach it to one of these upper branches. 
Yeah, yeah. Line, yeah, either way is good really. It's worth bearing in mind that especially on public land or even an airsoft site, the last thing you want to be doing is hacking down bits of tree. Yeah. Because uh, if everybody does that every weekend, it's going to be barren within a month or two. So yeah, dead fall. So look at that. So again, it's not the sturdiest stick, and we probably want to dig a little bit of ground in for it. Oh, it's loose hidden. That's going to do the job. Now the downside of this is obviously if it gets windy. Yeah. You're going to have no, not as much shelter as you do with the the ridge line. You could do your tent type. prevailing wind though, couldn't you? Yeah, so to speak. So you could do a, you know, if you know generally where the wind comes from, or you've got protection from the wind from one direction, you yeah. can set it up in a certain way. Or you may, maybe in a military context, you may just have to do that for a for an arc of fire or whatever. Now the only thing I'd add to doing this, so while you're putting all your ropes up and you've got your paracord out. If you know there's an area you're using as a latrine to go for a wee or more serious stuff or to dig, dig in for a shovel recce, or if you need to get to the toilets on the actual site, it's a good idea to run what we call a comms cord from where your position out to the edge of the woodland. So if you get there at night, you don't actually go for a whiz and then you're stumbling around trying to find it, you don't know where you are. All you've got to do is follow that line out to the edge of the tree line. You can see then. So if you've got sentry positions, you might yeah. Well. Again, it would go. They also, they would go sentry position, Jay, and you can also you can tug on them if you need to to let people know what's going on. But again, that's more than we need to do for us. Okay, I'm going to suggest we have a brew. Yeah, let's do it. Well, pretty much every video I've watched recently of any any soldier says finish basic training, sack off all of that stuff, and just buy a jet boil. <laughs> it seems to be the um, seems to be the way to do it. All right. very much. Oh, I've attracted the attention of a wasp. I suppose you've got tannin in them anyway. Super. Sugar, sir? Oh yes, please. Just a half. Thanks, Tom. So we haven't got any like saws or uh, bush knives out with us today because this is again public area and I don't I don't want yeah. to be dealing with any of that. Um, but I do have my, I do have a little UK legal folding yeah. flat knife. So. Again, in a later episode, we'll probably talk about starting fires responsibly from wet wood, dry wood, different sorts of tinder you can use. But we can't do that here. We'll have to do that on an airsoft site that gives permission to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is quite cosy, mate. Yep. Cheers, Tom. <laughs> so, brew in hand, we'll drink this, then talk about settling down for the night. Yep. <laughs> At some point when we're doing this, before we do the seat, I'll show you my Godzilla impression. It's brilliant. <laughs> The thing is, Tom, quite often, like on a day like this, you don't need really to put a basher up, but there's very much a, a psychological value to having a base camp. It's really nice, and now we're just sitting mm -hmm. here having a cup of tea, it's really nice just to have a little bit of something over the top, over the top yeah. psychologically. It's something deep in things inside your kind of your animal brain that goes, I've got a den where I've got a base to operate from, which makes you feel less vulnerable than if you were having a cup of tea five metres out in the open there, you'd feel more exposed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> This is a British Army issue roll mat. It is massive. Yeah. Um, this is my uh, self-inflating mattress, which is half the size and about seven times more comfortable. Yeah. So that's. Well, they are made by the lowest bidder for the most <laughs> amount of people. So the first thing I would put down. So obviously we've got this ground sheet, cheap ground sheet. It's only a couple yeah. of quid. I think really, really super useful just for all sorts of things. So it takes up no space in the bag. Put that down and just protects my bivy bag from punctures. So the bivy bag. This one is a British Army DPM in Gore-Tex and it is you can get some quite sophisticated bivvies this one is literally just a bag but it is massive which yeah. is really useful. loads of room you don't feel constrained in them at all, I'm, I'm a big lad anyway but even then this is really useful because you can when you can get in with all your kit on you can probably get your rifle and your boots and your... well we used to we used to sleep with a rifle in your sleeping bag yeah. and your boots on yeah if you can take your boots off you do obviously to let your feet freeze but there will be times on apparently this was owned by ISIS so okay <laughs> Right, into that, I'm going to put this. So, most of you will probably be familiar with this Thermarest style. Thermarest lost the, uh, the trademark expired, patent expired a while ago, so there's a million and one copies, copies these yeah. days. But this is so comfortable. It will inflate by itself, but yeah. it's tempting to just get a bit of help. <laughs> so that just goes quite nicely in the bag. And then my least tactical option. Is your orange sleeping bag. My bright orange sleeping bag. I figure that this is mainly for civilian stuff, and if I need a bright orange thing and I'm in the hills, 
and I'm cold. Well, I've got a bright orange warm thing. <laughs> it's, it's nice, Tom, but it's not Godzilla, is it? <laughs> Okay, this is only this is synthetic. It's a nice slip and break. It's, it's not a, not down. It's a synthetic, but it's good enough, and it's certainly warm enough for me in Britain down to about. It says it's comp. It says it's good down to zero degrees for me inside a bivy with that on. I could go probably go. The only thing you might want to add for a Milson if you're going to go to one be a sleeping bag liner so you don't get the inside of your sleeping bag filthy if you go in with your boots. That's good at it. <laughs> And this is more of an OP than a shelter, you know, it's like, so if I pull that to about there. That's perfect. All right, let's do a quick walk around. Show everyone what we've done. Really, very low profile. Yeah. And you could make it even lower, you know, if you wanted to. Realistically, it needs to be low enough to lie down and look where your head up and head and shoulders. So what we're really doing here, Tom, is we're sacrificing shelter for visibility. So it's really a milsim setup, if anything. If you join me in here. So if we're taking an OP off, wasn't yeah. it? Or even if we're just having a rest very quickly for an hour or two. Yeah, I mean, that went up in yeah. like four, I mean, three or four minutes. Really. I, could, I could watch this 180 arc. Yeah. You could be lying the other way and watch the other 180 arc, and it, we're not going to get bumped. I don't know if I'm used to the. Uh, yeah. But funny imagine if we had either the lean two yeah. or the ridge tent, then we have either two or one of the sides closed off from view. That's quite a lot of visibility. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously, this, it's probably twice as high as this needs to be as well. Again, a proper OP would be really well concealed, but if yeah. you're doing it in Milsim Airsoft terms, you've only really got 12 hours to play on that day, you can't spend 18 of them making an OP. <laughs> no, you know, it's not like Realistically, it's... you make an OP at night and you do it very quietly and you'd be dug in and you put Hessian screens up and all that sort of stuff, but for Airsoft Milsim terms, and bear in mind, we're talking Airsoft here, we're not trying to pretend we're soldiers or Braemeers or bushcraft survivalists, we're just saying, if you've got a poncho and you want some to shelter and you can throw up in minutes, yeah. This is probably what we'd do got, if we were playing in the middle of a fighting game where we need to get move out yeah. quickly. If you've got, if you rig your tarp or your basher with a uh, paracord like this one mm. and you've got enough, you've got a bunch of bungees with you, throw something yeah. up super fast. Oh, it's actually quite pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're saying about having something over your head. Yeah. It's just quite a nice feeling, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually yeah. quite nice, isn't it? Now, the other thing you can do, we're using a stick here to prop up the centrepiece. Yeah. But because of the loops on the other side of the basher, you could actually just attach a paracord yeah. and loop it up to an overhanging branch, which is usually a, a, be a better option because when you're moving around and you're shifting yep. stuff, the last thing you want to do is knock this. And yeah. Yeah, and these are, so these are, these are stretcher loops. Yeah. If you're okay using this as an improvised stretcher, but there's also loops on the underneath of this. If you can hang, you know, you could hang it here. If you're just at, in camp at night, you can hang your. They are a fantastic bit of kit. Yeah, but before we had these, people used to use the old green poncho. Yeah. And no one ever used it as a poncho. It was always used as a basher shelter. But the problem with the poncho is it had a hood in the centre. So you had to tie that hood off with the drawstring really tight. And quite often people use that hood then to attach it to the top to, to create that tent shape. But these are great. They yeah. really are. I mean, um, we get these for about 20 quid. Yep. This one has got a few holes in it. I've patched most of them. And I've got a small repair kit. I'll give it a few seasons use. And if it doesn't, if it falls apart, I'll get, either get a new one or I'll get a commercial one but for the money these are, these are brilliant. Yeah, I, I actually think they're one of the better bits of kit the army have had for a long time I mean I've not done anything like this is the first time I've set a basher up in maybe 20 20 25 years it's pleasant, isn't it? yeah uh, <laughs> so so again there were probably some of you there who are proper experts in this we're going that's rubbish gadge but if you bear in mind I'm just going off memory here yeah so if you have any ago. comments please as always please yeah. let us know what, what you, you know think. I, I did my basic infantry training in 1998 so you know, it's been a long time since I had set one of these up in a field. <laughs> Where's Godzilla anyway? Now, of course, this is all if you want to use military style kit. Yeah. If you want to be comfortable, get really comfortable, take a tent <laughs> and a camp bed and, and all that and do some glamping. Yeah. Um, 
I just quite fancy making life uncomfortable for myself for this weekend. And there's something quite relaxing about getting back to nature, as they say. And like that can be camping in yeah. a traditional sense, but there's there's a bit of there's a bit of Ray Mears or Bear Grylls in all, every guy, I think, who actually likes the idea of making a den out in the woods and camping. It's what you did as kids. It's like yeah. there's certain there's a certain romanticism towards that outdoor mountain life kind of idea, you know. And uh, it's actually quite good for the soul to get away from a lot of modern things. Well, it is a mill sim, isn't it? Yeah. No, depending on what milsim means to you, but to me that does mean simulating a little, simulating the more fun aspects of being in the yeah. military. Because not everyone wants to be woken up at four o'clock and shouted at. No, no, totally. But, but I mean, if you're going to do a, I always find it a bit funny when people end up in five-star hotels at milsims. But that's yeah. one of the. Uh... Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode episode of Anvil in the Woods. It's been a bit of a departure, hasn't it? From the yeah, usual well, we've quite, well, we're quite enjoying our, our afternoon out under a basher. So, if you enjoy this sort of thing, let us know, and we can do more sort of mill skills yeah. episodes for you. Anything you'd like to see. Bear in mind, we aren't hardcore survivalists or preppers or any of that nonsense. We're just airsofters who kind of like doing things a bit off the grid sometimes. Um, so, please like, subscribe, ding that bell if you want notifications when we upload a video. If you want to help AATV stay as independent as possible, please consider joining our Patreon campaign. And a big thank you to Gadge for coming along and helping us out. Been a pleasure, mate. And so, most importantly, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.